Okay, let's do an overview of Git. Okay, what we have is we have git bash, which is the command line tool, and I have a directory open to a project that I want to put under source code control. And I have the server, uh, a GitHub server, uh, where we're going to push the repository so that we can work with other people collaboratively on this code that I have locally. Okay, so first off, you open uh, bash, and you navigate to the directory where you want uh, to create a repository, which in the Git world is called a repo. So now to create that, you type git init, so that will initialize our repo. Okay, and it actually told us that it did initialize empty git repository in this directory. And so now you can see not only are we in the directory, um, we are now in a branch called master. We'll get into branches. Uh, so now you can see we have our git a repo, which is basically a little database that lives in this hidden folder. If you don't have hidden files turned on, then you won't see it. Um, I do have hidden files on, of course. Of course, I'm in Windows. Um, okay, so we have the we have our repo, but our code. Uh, notice it says empty. We have not put our code into the repo yet. If we do a git status, we can see that we can see that uh, these files are untracked. So we have to get them into the repo. Um, the first step in getting them into the repo is to add them to the stage, and then we will commit them. And the reason we have this two-step process is because we want to be able to select which files we commit into the repo. So to select them, we put them on the stage. And to put them on the stage, we add them. So we do a git add, and we could uh, do an add for each file. We put the file name here, and then do add again and do the other file name, or you just say dot to add them all. So that just added them all, though it did not give us any feedback, but we can see some feedback by doing git status again. So now we can see that these files, they're green, which means they're staged. And we're getting a little bit of a hint. They uh, Git often does that. If we want to unstage them, we can use a remove, a git remove cached file name to remove one of these files. Um, but we don't want to do that. We want to actually commit these files. So our next process is to do a git commit. And that will, we don't need anything after commit. It'll just commit everything that we have on the stage. So, but it will pull us into this text editor where we need to add a comment. So I'm just going to say, um, this is our first commit. And the rest of this is just a comment block that's talking about our first commit here. And it looks like you might want to actually put a pound sign in front of yours, um, but it will actually throw an error if you do that. You want to keep it uncommented out. So it is a comment, but it needs to be uncommented, which is kind of strange, um, because it's actually going to look to make sure that you entered something here, and it, it will not let you continue if you don't, so it will actually error out if you don't. Okay, and to get out of this is also unintuitive. You have to hit escape, and hit uh, colon, and then hit wq, and then hit return. Now, we can see uh, this is our first comment. That's the comment I just typed, and it shows that it, uh, that it put those into the repo, and it's put us back at the command prompt. We're still in the master branch. Um, we can do a status again. Hit and now we can see we have nothing to commit, um, working tree clean. That means it, we have no more changes to check in. It doesn't see any more changes. That means our, our code out here, our working code, is exactly the same as the code we've checked in. So now let's say we want to start working on our code that is in, in control here. Um, and let's say we want to change this password from your password um, to Freddy. So now I'm going to close this, hit save. Now, it's very important to always save your work in your uh, development environment. Don't leave anything unsaved when you come in and start working with Git. If you have unsafe uh, work in your development environment, that can cause problems. It can even cause errors when you work with Git, and, it, it, and that can cause you know, issues. So uh, make sure to always save your code before you start coming to the command line and working with Git. So, And it's a good idea to just even close your development environment like I did. I closed Notepad. OK, so let's do another Git status. And now you can see it detected that change. And it, it, because it, it says, hey, there's a file that's been modified. So we need to stage and then commit this file. But before we do that, let's say for, for one reason or another, we want to see the change. We want to actually do a difference and see what was changed. Let's say um, we, it's, we, we just came back from vacation and, and we forgot about this change. We're like, what did, I, what did I change? So you do a git diff. Now git diff will, show, will, will stream up along this screen all the changes. And if you have a lot of changes, it could scroll up a whole bunch of stuff here. So you might want to then put a file name here to um, so that it only does the difference of that particular file. But here, we don't have much, so I'm just going to say git diff. So now you can see the old is in red, the old line of code, and the new line of code is in green. So you can see how your password changed to Freddy. 
So now we can commit the chain. Now we can say, okay, yeah, now I remember I did that. So I'll commit it. So now you're going to want to stage it. Um, so you want to do um, git uh, add and all of the files. So now those are added. And we can see that by doing status. So we can see, yes, it's added to the stage. And then we can do a git commit to commit everything on the stage. And of course, we're back in the editor again. Um, so I can commit. OK, so we so now we get out of this. And it's been done. Second commit, so it's done. And we can see we're back to a working uh, clean tree. So that's been done. So that's how you work with Git uh, locally. This is your local repo. So you have your own little database that is storing all of your changes that you're making to your files and keeping track of them. Um, you can also create branches of your file. Instead of like, if I want to create, if I want to play around with the code, if I have a sort of a second project I'm working on that has similar code, instead of creating all these separate databases, instead of like going out and um, copying this and creating lots of copies of my code all over the place, um, and getting the whole point of source code control is to keep you from doing things like that. So what you would do instead is you create what's called a branch. So let's say we want to create a branch. So we would just say git branch. Um, send box. Okay, now it, it didn't show anything. It didn't, didn't give us any feedback there. And if we do that, we don't get any feedback. So what happened? Well, if we type git branch, now you can see we, there's a list of our branches and there's sandbox. So sandbox did get created. So, but we're still in master. So we created it, but it didn't switch to it. So to switch switch to it, we have to use checkout. We have to check out that um, branch. And that is intuitive once you realize what it's doing. Check out and then a branch name. Sand, sand, yeah. Sandbox. Okay, so now you can see it is switched to Sandbox. And what it's actually done is it's actually taken the files from master and put them into the database and taken the copies, the, the fresh copies out for Sandbox and put them out here. So these are no longer the master files. These are the Sandbox files. So if we go in here and make this make a change, or even yet, yeah, let's add another file. It makes it really easy to see what's going on. Let's add um, branch Sandbox. So we've created a file here. And if I do a status, you can see we have an uncommitted file here. So let's just do, oh, let's, uh, yeah, let's just do a git add. So we added it, git commit. And to do a little bit of a shortcut here, I am going to do an m, which lets us do our comment here, um, added branch file. OK, so now that's committed. So now if we do a git checkout, and now we're going to check the master out. So now you can see we switched to master, and you can see our file went away. So these are the, the files that belong to the master branch. And, and the files from our um, sandbox, they got pushed in, back into the database. So that's why you have to be always be very careful. If you've got multiple branches, you got to be very careful that you're in the branch you think you're in. Otherwise, you, you start you know modifying code in the wrong branch. And that can really you know, mess you up. So let's see. We covered branching and... Um, let's see, let's do a, um, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, and put this on the server. Okay, so first of all, we need a place to put it. So we need to create a repository on the server with the same name as our local repository. So I'm going to create it. Okay, so it's been created. So we are now in the cloud repo of this repo, but this repo doesn't know anything about this repo yet. It's just empty. There would be files here if there were files, but right here, it's giving you the URL to get to this repo, and we're going to need that. So I'm going to copy that. And what we're going to have to do is first put that URL um, into a path variable. Okay, and this is called our remote server. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a git remote and do an add because we're adding this URL, and now we get to name this URL. So this could be any name we want. Often people put origin here as if origin is a command, but it's not. The origin sometimes you'll see origin here. A lot of people just put origin there. Um, origin is not a command. A lot of documentation makes it look like that's a command. Origin is just what that is. That, that, that URL is an origin. So you, you know you could call this. Um, uh, let's see. This is this is a test. It's a git test, right? It's a git test origin. So that's our git test origin. And then we need to put in that URL that we copied. So we paste that in. And we hit return. Now this again is another one of these commands that doesn't give us any feedback. So to see that that was created, we need to type git remote all by itself, and that'll give us a list of our remotes. 
So there's our get test origin remote. Now we can push get, and we want to do a push, and we need the u, and then we need our uh, get test origin. That's our URL. And we need to say master, this is kind of the unintuitive little step here is, you need to say which uh, branch you're pushing with. Um, you would think it would just default to pushing the one you're in, but it needs to know that. It, it won't, it won't uh, work without that. So make sure you have that. And it's going to take a second because it has to handshake with the server and then actually push the files across the internet. And it may ask you your credentials. In my case, it didn't ask for credentials because I've already logged into it earlier. Okay, so we can see that we had success. And now um, nothing changed here because we haven't refreshed the page, of course, because that's the way browsers work. Browsers don't know things have changed. So we have to click on this. And now you can see our files are here. Um, notice our folder is not because this is hidden. This is supposed to be behind the scenes. And it, it, the data did come up here and the server, it's on the server, but you just don't get to see it. You know, that's basically the, the properties and methods and all that of, of this thing, well, not properties and methods, but that's all our history. And it's all in there because look, see, we have two commits here. We have the history of our commits. You can see here's our first commit, here's our second commit. So you can see our history is there. Um, and we can actually come in here and make changes. Um, if we select this file, um, this is one where we change it to Freddy. Uh, we can edit and we can change Freddy to Teddy. And we can come down here and you'll notice this button says commit and there's a place for us to add a comment. So what it's actually going to do is it's going to actually commit the change. It's not, we don't have to worry about staging and then committing. We're going to do a commit and our comment all in one step here. And that's because we're only doing one file at a time. So there's no need to differentiate, you know, which files we're committing and which files we're not committing. So we don't need to stage. We're just going to do straight into a commit. So this is our um, password to Teddy and we'll commit the change. And now you can see there it's changed. And if we come back to our files, we need to see we've got a new comment and the new comments there. So that has been done. So, but this change has not been pushed down. We would have to pull it from here. We'll have to do a pull to get it. But before we do a pull, let's create a change. Let's change something here. We're going to pretend that this change was made by one of our teammates. And while they were making that change, we made a change of our own to the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it from Freddy to Eddie. So now, save that. Okay, so now, before we do a pull, let's um, stage this. So we have to do a git add and do a git commit m password to Eddie and done. And just to be on the safe side, let's do a status and we have a working tree clean. So now we need to do a pull. Pull is pretty simple because we've already set up our origin, our remote. So we can do a uh, git pull, and then the name of our origin, which we decided to name git test um, my origin. That was what it was, right? No, no, no. Okay, what was it? Git, git remote, git remote. It's git test origin, it's just origin. There's no my origin in there. Okay, so we need to get that my other. Okay, so now, that will pull it and notice do, 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 conflict, merge conflict. So it found a conflict. Now, if it had not found a, found a conflict, it would have actually committed the changes. We wouldn't have had to do any staging and committing and all that. So when you're pushing and pulling and editing on server, you know, it, it's all automatically com committed unless there's a conflict in which you have to do some sort of resolution. So let's look at how we do the resolution. If we open this file, we see it inserted all this stuff between, between this, uh, these less thans and all these greater thans it is showing, it you know, basically breaks your code, which is kind of weird You're not, you know, before you get used to this. It's saying, okay, you know, here's your change. You put Eddie in here and this put Teddy in here. So you need to fix this. So what it's doing is it's basically saying you, fit, you pick, I can't pick, you gotta pick. So you gotta delete the one you don't want. So let's say we want it to be Teddy. So now we want to save this, okay? And now if we look at the status, get status, Boom. So we have basically, this, this works as a change. So we need to commit this change. So we do a, uh, first we got to add, of course. So we do a uh, git add. And now we want to do git commit. And um, we'll do something like keep teddy. And that's done. And now if we do a git status, uh, we can see we're working with a clean tree. So we've done a conflict resolution. Um, Okay, so that is 
Okay, um, now let's say we wanted, oh, that's true, we didn't really look at that. Let's say uh, they make another change. Let's say somebody on our, on our team makes another change. And let's see, they're going to change this test to test 01. And then they're going to say test to test 01. And they're going to commit the change. OK. Um, oh, we didn't push. OK, let's, first let's push our, the fact that we did a conflict flick resolution. So let's do a push, uh, get, get, push um, to get test origin. So that's going to push everything up. And that takes a minute. It's got to do all the handshaking. OK, rejected. Failed to push. Do, do, do. Updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. This usually, <laughs> you may want to first integrate the remote changes. In other words, get pull before. Right, so since we both have changes, it doesn't like it. So we've actually got to do a pull first. So we're going to do a pull, pull, bag it, get, pull, uh, get, test, origin. And and okay, so done. Okay, so we pulled that. Now they had a change. So we let's say we wanted to see this change. How would we see that change? What how did they you know what did they change on the server? If we do a uh, get status, um. Um, you can see we're in a clean directory, and if we do a git diff, there's, there's nothing to diff, um, because everything got committed. You know, when you pull things down from the server, it gets committed, so there's no way to really do a diff. So what you have to do is you have to do a historical diff. Historical diffs are um, a little unintuitive until you see the pattern. Uh, git, and you want to do a diff again. But now what you want to do is you want to say master tilde 1 master, and now you could do tilde 0 and it'd be a little, a little easier to read, because what this is saying is I'm going to do a diff against the previous master um, branch with the current master branch. And, the, and and this is basically, the number is basically going back in time with your commits. So this is commit zero, which is basically the commit we're on. And this is commit one, which is the previous commit. Now, but zero is default, so we don't have to say that. So it's basically saying, compare the code we have now to the last code that we committed, which is the code that we committed when we, when we did a pull. So now, when we do that, we can see the difference. And this is the difference. This is what they did on the server. They added that 01. To test, we went from test to test 01. Um, you could also see their comments if you did a git log, and now you can see a log. You can see all of the um, all of the uh, the comments for all of the commits. And basically, that's it. That's how we've now got our code on the server. We can now um, do uh, a team. Uh, development uh, using this on the server and everybody has their own local you interact with your local you push and pull and that's basically how git works um, any comments questions leave them below thank you